Hello. Good morning, everyone, or good day, wherever you may be in the world today. My name is Rhonda Pierce, and I represent Smets Needles. And today, I'm here uh, with Hens and Chicks um, Studio. Um, Heidi's not on screen today, but Heidi will be in the chat. So um, I'll be talking about Smets Needles today. If you have questions about needles, I would I invite you to um, type in questions into the chat, and I'll try to um, monitor that as I move along. And let's see, let's see, okay. Well, let's just go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Rhonda Pierce, and I represent Smets Needles in North America, and welcome. So I'm here today on behalf of Hen and Chick Studio in Conrad, um, Iowa. Um, Heidi's in the chat room, so if you've got questions, um, she can help answer those, and I can also help answer some of your questions uh, live um, online. So today we're going to talk about sewing machine needles, and specifically Smet's sewing machine needles. What's my mission here today? Well, I want to elevate your respect for that hard-working two-inch piece of steel, the Smets needle. I'm hoping to remove any perceived mystery about your sewing machine needles, while also elevating your confidence in your needle selection. So, let's go ahead and get started. I've got my uh, Smet Super Demo Needle. This is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. And I always like to talk about the parts of the needle. Because when you are familiar with the parts of the needle and their function, um, it helps you make a more informed decision on what needle type and size to, to use. So, um, mine is actually mounted on a wooden base, but I think even virtually, you can see the very top of your needle. This is referred to as the butt of the needle, and it's a beveled edge. And you might think, hmm, so what, a beveled edge? <laughs> well, you know, it's beveled for a reason. So when you go to insert a new needle into your needle holder, you don't have a lot of wiggle room, right? So the top of the needle is beveled for easier insertion into your needle holder. Our home sewing machines, 99% of all of our home sewing machines require a flat shank needle. A flat shank needle, this area here, again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. We have a little transitional area on your needle. This is referred to as the sh shoulder of the needle. And I hope uh, you've noticed when you go to buy your Smets needles that there's either one or two bands of color. And we'll talk about those color bands shortly. We have the length of the needle, and this is referred to as the blade of the needle. And Smets actually measures this area here of the needle to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, etc. So the Smets size is actually based on a measurement. On the front side of your needle, how many of you have noticed um, the groove? Even on your little two inch piece of steel, you can still see and feel the groove. And what's the purpose of the groove? The groove is going to cradle your thread so it's not flip flopping back and forth. Your thread should move evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye so you get a nice clean stitch. We have the point and the tip and these change according to different needle types. And on the back side of the needle, how many have, of you have noticed this indentation? This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. It's located on the back side of your needle above the eye. This is a scarf, and the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through your fabric and throat plate, the bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So the bobbin hook needs passing room in order to 
catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So this is the scarf, and the scarf changes according to different needle types also. All right, so those are your basic um, parts to your sewing machine needle. But you know what? I haven't mentioned one of the most important features to your needle, and that's the eye of the needle. It's so important that I have a special um, photo, uh, diagram for you. The eye of the needle. Your everyday needle, the universal needle, the eye ha is about 40% the width of the blade. But look at the eye of the embroidery needle, and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the metallic and top stitch, you can see that the eye is not only wider, but it's also elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have a situation with threads that are breaking or shredding, guess what? You can easily solve that problem. Just move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. So I hope I've solved a little sewing situation that we frequently encounter, threads that break and shred. Just move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. All right. So next I want to talk um, about, oh good, I see people are coming on board. My little chat isn't scrolling, so it kind of gets stuck, but I'm glad to see people here today, and thank you. Good morning to everybody. So let's talk next about the Smets um, color bands. I mentioned on the shoulder of your needle, you'll find either one or two bands of color. So I've got a little chart here on the luggage tag. So let's review um, how the, the color chart works. So um, on this side here, you see the column is labeled needle type. And so all the different Smets needle types are listed and many have a color assigned to the type. On the other side of the chart, you'll see the column is labeled needle size. And each needle size is assigned a color. Now, on the actual needle, you'll find um, two bands of color. The top band identifies the needle type. So on this sample here, um, the top color band is yellow. So what kind of needle is this? Yeah, we look here under needle type and we see yellow is a stretch needle. And on your needle, um, the lower color band identifies the needle size. So on this sample here, it's rose color. So we find rose over here on the chart and we see rose is size 7511. So this sample needle here is a stretch size 7511. But let me give you a couple more um, examples. My favorite go-to needle for all kinds of piecing, quilting, fashion sewing, etc. is a Microtex size 8012. So Microtex, what would that top color band be? Well, we look under needle type and we find Microtex is purple. So top color band will be purple. And size 8012, we find that here. And that's orange. So Microtex size 8012 will have a top color band of purple and a lower band of orange. One more example would be, what if your needle has two bands of orange? What needle type and size would that be? Well, we just find orange over here under needle type, and we see orange is a jersey needle. And once again, we find orange over here under needle type is a size 8012. So two bands of orange on your needle will be a jersey size 8012 needle. Now, on your chart, I need to point out that the very first needle listed is universal needle. And there's no color assigned. In fact, the box is blocked out. So what does that mean? Universal needles will have only one band of color. 
and that's to identify the needle size. So if you have a universal size 8012 needle, and by the way, that's the most popular needle type and size, Universal size 8012 will have just a single band of orange for size 8012. If you have a universal size 9014, which just, by the way, happens to be the second most popular needle type and size, universal size 9014 will just have um, a single band of blue for size 9014. So I hope that helps you uh, identify your needles, especially after you've taken them out of the needle pack. <laughs> you can kind of date your needles also. Um, the color uh, coding, uh, the two bands of color started in 2014. So you can kind of date some of your, your needles just by the uh, number of, of bands on your needle. <clears throat> okay. So if you've got any questions, go ahead and just type those in um, the chat. And um, okay, so I see that Heidi has um, mentioned in the chat that if you wanna get this handy little color chart, you can get it free when you purchase a SMATS bundle. And we'll talk about those bundles shortly. All right, now the other thing that I wanna talk about is um, the actual SMATS needle pack. I want to make sure that you understand how to read the needle pack. You know, on your little pack of needles, there's a lot of information. So let's just start at the bottom and work our way up. So at the very bottom of your needle pack, you always find the needle size. So on this sample here, we've got um, size 9014. I think most everyone understands the needle size. But what are those numbers above the needle size? 130-705H. Yeah, it looks kind of mysterious and frightful, doesn't it? But no need to be frightened by it. That is your needle system. The needle system. Needle system 130-705H means that the needle has a flat shank and the H translates from a German word that means scarf, this little indentation. So needle system 130705H is the needle system that 99% of all of our home sewing machines require. So don't let that trip you up. You're looking for a flat shank needle with a scarf and that's needle system 130705H. Above that, oh, let's see, also on the needle system line, sometimes you'll find um, an additional letter. And on this sample here, we've got a dash E, dash E for embroidery. On some of your other needle types, it might be a dash Q for quilting or a dash M for microtex or a J for jeans. So lots of information on that little needle system line. Above the needle system, you'll find the needle type spelled out. So these are embroidery needles. On some of your needle packs, you'll even find, even today, the German words for needle. Above that is the Smets name. And because of the clear packaging, you can see the two bands of color. So on this pack here, the top color band is red. Red for embroidery. And the lower color band is blue for size 9014. So if you stop and think about it, not only is there a lot of information on that little two inch plastic chip, but it's redundant information. <laughs> so I hope that helps you out um, in reading your little pack of needles. You know what, I'll give, I'll give you one more um, example on how to read the needle pack. And yeah, look at the size on this pack here. Yeah, these are assorted sizes. We've got sizes 7010, 8012, and 9014. So those are your needle sizes. And above that is your needle system, 130705H. So we know that that's a flat shank needle with a scarf for our home sewing machine. You've got the universal name, above that is the Smith's name, and as we already learned, 
Universal needles have only one band of color to identify the size. So if I can get this up close enough without shaking too much, you can see the two needles on the left hand side have green bands. So that's size 7010. The next two needles to the right have orange bands. So we know that those are universal size 8012. And it's kind of hard to see there because the Z is in the way. But the needle on the far right has a single band of blue, so that identifies universal size 9014. So, yeah, lots of information on your little, little pack. Let me see if there are any questions. Okay, well, let's scoot along here. And um, I already mentioned what the most popular needle type is. Universal needle. Universal size 80 is the most popular needle type and size followed by universal size 9014. So I recommend that everyone have universal needles in their stash for all kinds of sewing. The universal needle has a slightly rounded point and it works well with woven and knit fabric. So it's the workhorse of all needle types. Now let's talk about needle types that are popular for piecing and quilting. And you know what? Lots of people like to use the universal needle. In fact, lots of famous quilters like to use the universal needle for the piecing and for the quilting. But I always like to say with Smets you have options. So let's look at four other options for piecing and quilting. And I'm not presenting these in any certain er, um, order. So we've got the jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. And you might be thinking, really? A jeans needle for piecing and quilting? You bet. If you're making a denim quilt, if you're making a flannel quilt, or if you're making one of those heavy duty raggy quilts, the jeans needle is up to the task. What's special about the jeans needle is that it has a reinforced blade. A reinforced blade so that when your jeans needle passes through your fabric and the throat plate, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle as you're creating the stitch. So you'll get a cleaner stitch with that reinforced blade when you're working with heavy duty fabrics. So that's your jeans needle with the reinforced blade. Another popular needle type for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. The top stitch needle. What's so special about the top stitch? Well, we already saw in that diagram about the eyes of the needle that the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on your thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. The top stitch needle has a slightly rounded point. Another option is, just as the name suggests, is the quilting needle. This is a great needle for piecing and for quilting. What's special about the quilting needle? It was specifically designed with a special taper. A special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. So for the quilting needle, You'd probably use the size 7511 for the actual piecing of your project and the larger size 9014 for the quilting of your project. So the quilting needle has a special taper and a slightly rounded point. So that leaves one other needle type popular for piecing and quilting. Do you know what it is? It is my favorite needle and maybe it's yours too, I don't know. That is the Smets Microtex needle. The generic name for Microtex is a sharp needle. So when your books and magazines say use a sharp needle, they're referring to a Smets Microtex needle. What's so special about the Microtex needle? It has what's referred to as a very slim acute point. Very slim acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get the cleanest, most precise stitches. 
And because this is a very slim acute point, guess what? The Microtex needle is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace the Microtex needle more frequently than any of your other needle types. And I'll also just add that if you like to piece and quilt with batik fabrics, this is your needle of choice. That very slim acute point can just pierce through those tightly woven um, fibers and the over dye of your batiks. You know, even if you pre-wash your batiks, the weave is still a little bit tight and there's oftentimes still dye residue, but the microtax can just pierce through those fabrics beautifully. So let's do a quick review of five needle types popular for piecing and quilting. First, we have the workhorse of all needle types, the universal needle, which is also available in the widest assortment of sizes. The universal needle has a slightly rounded point. We have the jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. And the special feature about this needle is that it has a reinforced blade. So now you can work through those flannels and those extra heavy duty raggy quilts and work with confidence because the needle has a reinforced blade. We have the top stitch needle, which has that um, extra large eye. So um, if you have threads that are breaking or shredding, the top stitch is a, a great needle choice. There's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the top stitch eye. We have the quilting needle with a slightly rounded point, but what's special about the quilting needle is the special taper. The special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. And then finally, we have the Microtex needle, also known as a sharp needle. The Microtex needle has a very slim acute point, so you'll get really precise stitches uh, when you use the Microtex needle. Now, you can buy these at Hen and Chick Studio. You can buy them as single cards, but there's an even better deal. So Heidi is offering all five of these cards bundled up and when you buy the Smets Piecing and Quilting Bundle, you'll also receive the handy little luggage tag with the color chart. And don't worry, if you're not traveling yet, that's no problem. You can attach this to your sewing machine, or you can even hang it on your bulletin board in your sewing room. So um, the bundle that's available at Hen and Chick Studio comes with all these needles and the little um, luggage tag plus the ever popular Smets ABC Pocket Guide, which is the foundation to today's class. So you'll want to get your hands on that. So I know Heidi has these um, up on the website. In fact, oh, she's already added the link um, to your, your Smets Needle Bundle. So that's really great. Um, Oh yeah, so Heidi's saying, wow, it's really amazing how much engineering goes into um, each needle. You're absolutely right. In fact, I think you might be surprised to know um, how long it takes to make a needle. That's always a good mystery question and very few people get it right. It takes 12 weeks to make your needle. 12 weeks to make your little Smets needle. Now in 2012, I was at the Smets factory in Germany. So I did see some of the specialty needles being made. So I was really happy to, to see that. And there's um, over 32 steps in the production of the needle. And then there's over 70 quality control steps along the way. So when you buy your Smets needles, you know that they are sewing worthy. So that's your little trivia question or your trivia information of, of the day. Okay, let's just scoot along because I want to talk a little bit about um, sewing with knits. If you haven't, oh, sewing, if you haven't sewn with knits in a while, um, wow, I encourage you to do that. So um, let me see here. We've got, there are two uh, needles that you need in your stash when sewing um, with knits. 
First you need a jersey needle. A jersey needle. The jersey needle is known as a, um, a ballpoint needle. The jersey needle has a medium ballpoint. The other needle type that you need in your stash is a stretch needle. A stretch needle. And the stretch needle also has a medium ballpoint. But the stretch needle has a narrower eye and a deeper scarf. And those two differences make a huge difference in how your machine, your fabric, and your thread and needle all play well together. So if you're sewing on knits, you need two needle types, um, the jersey and the stretch. So how do you know which needle type to use? Yeah, how do you know? Well, there is a rule of thumb. If you're working with just a regular knit fabric, use the jersey needle. But if your fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, use the stretch needle. Again, the rule of thumb is if your fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, use the stretch needle. And that uh, um, rule of thumb works probably 80% of the time. When um, your fabric with lycra, spandex, or elastic does not like your um, stretch needle, don't worry. The jersey needle will probably work, so don't be afraid to change. I know it wasn't so long ago that I made um, a, t a cotton t-shirt that had 3% lycra in it. So I, I used the um, stretch needle. But for some reason, I got a funny stitch, and I was using a fresh needle, so I just switched to a jersey needle, and it worked beautifully. So don't be afraid to switch. Sometimes stretch and jersey are interchangeable, but not always. So you can get these needles um, at Hen and Chick Studio also. All right. And that leaves one other um, special needle that I want to talk about here today. And this one came out about two years ago, so I don't know if you've seen or used it um, yet, but yes, Heidi has it available for you, and it is in a bundle. So this is the Smet Super Nonstick Needle, Super Nonstick Needle. And I think virtually you can see that these needles are a different color, right? They're kind of a charcoal gray or um, gunmetal color, and there's no color coding on it because color coding won't stick to these non-stick needles. So the super non-stick, there's three features to these, these needles. Uh, the non-stick surface, a reinforced blade, and also an extra large eye. So when are you gonna use these special needles? You're gonna use them anytime you work with a spray adhesive, a sticky stabilizer, a fusible, so when you do machine embroidery, machine applique, if you're sewing on vinyl, because what happens when you sew on vinyl? The vinyl gets warm and then it starts to hug your needle and that's not a good thing. <laughs> so you wanna be able to see where you're sewing. So the nonstick surface will resist the vinyl from hugging your needle. Also, if you sew on oil cloth, uh, splash fabric or um, hoop and loop tape. Now hoop and loop tape is always kind of a little challenge. It's kind of sticky and it's a different kind of surface, but the super nonstick works really slick on, on that hoop and loop tape. So three characteristics to this um, super nonstick. It has the nonstick surface. Can't use that T word that we find in our kitchen pots and pans, but it's a nonstick surface. This needle also has a reinforced blade and an extra large eye. So if you do machine embroidery or machine applique, you're probably working with a sticky stabilizer, right? Yeah, and what happens? Yeah, that stickiness um, tends to gum up your needle. So the non-stick needle will resist the stickiness of your stabilizers. So again, if you're working with fusibles, oh yeah, even fusible batting, this would be a great needle choice. If you're working with fusible battings, machine embroidery, machine applique, vinyls, um, splash fabric, oil cloth, and hoop and loop tape. So um, terrific uh, needle, and it comes in four sizes, 
70, 80, 90, and 100. And guess what? You can sample these. Heidi has these all bundled up for you. She's got the link right there in the in the chat. So when you buy this little bundle, you'll get um, uh, four cards of the Super Nonstick. And yes, it includes the handy little color chart, luggage tag, and the handy um, ABC pocket guide. So you'll want to get those while they're still available. So, okay. Well, we have just covered a lot of information here. Oh, you know what? There was one more thing I wanted to mention. You know, when sewing with knits. And, well, I, I'm coming to you from the Chicago area. And I know Hen and Chick Studio is in Iowa. And we get a lot of wi winter weather here, right? <laughs> so I love to sew with um, minky and cuddle fabric. So those are those plush fabrics that have stretch. And so what needle do you use with those fabrics? Yeah, um, the stretch size 9014 is your needle of choice. So if I was doing this presentation um, in the winter time, I would probably be wearing a vest or a little jacket that I had made out of um, cuddle fabric. So I would have used the stretch size 9014. So just wanted to make sure you, you, you know about that. Okay, well, we've covered a lot of different um, needles, needle types. We know that you can go to Hen and Chick Studio to get your needles, and Heidi has those bundles for you. Now, the mystery question, the mystery question, it's a question we all ask, and that is how long does a needle last? Well, the easy answer is not forever. <laughs> The easy answer could be three seconds if you're working with a new needle and you hit a pin right away. Could be three seconds. Um, you could get 20 hours of sewing out of your needle. Um, if you're sewing um, a lightweight fabric and you're not pushing or pulling your or tugging your fabric as you feed it underneath the needle. So three seconds to 20 hours. So we're just going to average it out to eight hours of sewing time. But then I have power quilters come up to me and say, well, Rhonda, I know when to change my needle. I change my needle every four to five hours. So I think the more important question is not um, so much how, how much sewing time can you get out of a needle. The question is, what are the clues to changing the needle? So there are definite clues um, while you're sewing that will say, hello, it's time to change the needle. And we kind of touched on uh, one of those clues already, and that's when your threads are breaking and shredding. Yeah, you need to change your needle. In that instance, you either need to move up a needle size or change to a different needle type that has a larger eye. But... The other thing about the eye of the needle is if you don't change your needle frequently enough, the thread will actually create a groove in the eye of the needle. That's not a good thing. A groove in the eye of the needle is going to shred and break your thread. So that's a clue. Just change the needle. Change the needle. What's happening to um, your fabric when you're sewing? Yeah, is your fabric getting kind of tucked down into the throat plate? That's a definite clue that you need to change the needle. Um, is your fabric being snagged or puckered when you um, create your stitches? Those are clues. It's time to change the needle. So what do you do? Yeah, just get a new needle. And what about your stitches, your stitch quality? What are the clues? Are your stitches skipping? Are your stitches uneven? Or are you sitting at your machine and you're saying, well, Rhonda, I'm sewing in a straight line. How come my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly? Well, you've got a dull needle. <laughs> Needles don't last forever. You wear them out. So what's the solution? Just get a new needle. Change the needle. And there's one other clue as to when it's time to change the needle. 
hopefully when you're sewing, you're in that little bubble, right? Or a big bubble, and you've just pushed all of today's problems beyond that, that bubble. And you're just sewing along, your machine is humming along, and then you start to hear a little click, click, clicking sound. Well, that's your needle saying, hello, I'm doll, you need to change me. I've worked hard for you. If you ignore that little click, click, clicking sound, now it graduates to a pop, pop, popping sound. Now it's saying, hello, I gave you a clue, change me. <laughs> I don't have any quality stitches left in me, change me. So, and if you ignore the clicking and the popping sound, now your machine is going clunk, 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 clunk. And what's your first tendency when you hear that clunking sound? You think, oh, something's wrong with my machine. Well, it's possible there could be something wrong with your machine. But even if you took your machine into the technician and say, hey, my machine's making a funny clunking sound, what's the tech going to say? Yeah, when's the last time you changed your needle? <laughs> so changing the needle is an easy solution to maintaining your machine and providing a consistent quality stitch throughout your um, project. So you might also think about it as um, being consistent with the quality of your project. I mean, after all, you've spent a lot of money on your sewing machine. If you spent $100 on your machine or if you've spent over $10,000 on your machine, you've spent a lot of money on your machine and you need to maintain it. You've bought beautiful fabrics that you've sought out, and they're quality, pro, uh, quality fabrics. You're using beautiful, expensive threads, right? And you've bought the books and the patterns. And don't forget about your labor, your labor of love that you've invested into your projects. So that is time and money also. So you've, in, you've invested a lot of time and money in your project, and that includes... Um, maintaining the needle, switching out the needle when it gets dull so you have quality uh, from the very start of your project to the very end when you've added that label to your quilt, right? Don't forget the label. So we're not just trying to sell you more needles. No, we want you to have a successful sewing experience and that includes um, changing out the needle so you get a clean, precise stitch throughout your project. So, yeah, we've just um, covered a lot of information here. I see there, Kathy here has a question. She's asking for a safe way to dispose of used needles. So that's a good question. So first of all, the needles are made of steel, that is German steel. Um, so those are recyclable. You'll need to check with your, um, your local recycle um, community to find out what the rules and regulations are, but it's steel, so they, they are recyclable. The little plastic cartridge and, of course, this uh, little pa uh, paper hang card are also disposable, recyclable, so you can toss those into your recycle um, bin. But I would encourage you to check with your local uh, waste management system. Um, for any special recommendations. It, every community is a little bit different. So when I um, uh, use up my needles, I collect them in a little old um, Altoid tin. And I just love it when that Altoid tin gets really heavy. And then I just toss the entire um, tin. Um, if you're throwing a single needle away, I would suggest that you um, put it in some cardboard, corrugated cardboard that you thread it between uh, the top and the bottom of that cardboard. So just in case um, the um, garbage person doesn't stick themselves, um, in case the, the needle slides through um, your receptacle. So yeah, use some cardboard. So good question. Yes, Dolores, old pin bottles. Yes, that's a good idea too. Um, they have a safety cap, and when full, you can just throw those away. That's a good, good, good suggestion. Let me see if there are... Oh, okay, so Heidi says that they love cuddle fabrics. Yeah, me too. I've got some cuddle fabrics that I'm waiting um, to, to sew. I think I made like 
two vests and a jacket last year out of cuddle fabric and again i used the stretch size 9014 for those um those fabrics and even shannon fabrics that manufactures cuddle fabrics and uh, minky suggests matt's uh stretch size 9014 so okay oh all right so um heidi has um a link for the um, stretch and jersey needles. So that's good, I'm glad that's up there. I think those are bundled, right? So you get the, um, the color chart and the handy little um, ABC pocket guide. All right, let me see if there are some other questions. Oh, Teresa, okay, so Teresa said that she just downloaded the Smets app. So yes, there's a free app that's available to you and it's based on the ever popular Smets ABC Pocket Guide. Now you can go into Hen and Chicks and they've got this for you, but they've got this as a freebie when you um, buy the bundles. So you'll wanna get your hands on the bundles today while they still, still have them um, available. So you can tuck this into your uh, purse when you go shopping. Um, or when you can go on a retreat. Hopefully we'll be going on retreat soon. Um, okay, so in the little uh, ABC pocket guide, we've got everything you need to know about your needle anatomy, plus that wonderful picture about the eyes of the needle. So you don't have to remember that the embroidery top stitch and metallic have larger eyes. In here, we also have um, how to read the needle package. So do you remember what 13705H means? Yeah, that's a flat shank needle with a scarf and most of our sewing machines require needle system 13705H for our home sewing machines. Then we photographed all the different needle types. We tell you what sizes are available, the color coding, what the special features are and, and uses. Then at the bottom of page six, and going for about the next 12 or so pages, is a little reference, what needle to use with what fabrics, because how can you remember it all? <laughs> so this is, this is handy. Also in the little ABC pocket guide, we've got the color chart, so you don't have to remember. And then I always like to point out, we've got clues to change the needle and there's a really nasty looking needle there and I'll tell you about this image here on this nasty looking needle if this was not magnified if you were looking at this needle with your naked eye um, just a normal needle but a used needle with your naked eye it would look it would look sharp but this has been magnified and you can see how dull it looks. And I think even virtually you can see it's got a super burr on the end and all those burrs and striations on the point and tip. So yeah, that is one nasty looking needle that's just gonna rip up your fabrics and, and your thread. So uh, change your needle. So to get the free app, you can go to Google Play or to the iStore and just type in SMETS, S-C-H-M-E-T-Z, and the free app will pop right up. So all of the images that um, you've seen here in the little ABC pocket guide are in the free app. Plus, what I like about the app is it has even more fabrics on the app. Um, so there are over 80 fabrics that are listed, so you can click over 80 fabrics to get a needle recommendation. So that's really handy. Now the other thing about the app is it's looking a little bit dated these days. We were hoping um, to update it this year. I don't think it's gonna happen. After all, this is mid-September already, right? <laughs> So, but here's the good thing, you know, needles don't really change that much. So the information is still solid. So download that free app. Uh, you'll always have it in your, your phone. Um, handy, but you still want to get your hands on the little um, paper version too. All right, let me see. Do we have any other? Oh gosh, so Heidi's saying she sold lots of those bundles. So that's great. Um, okay, well, that's, um, whew, we've covered a lot of information. Now, one of the questions I always get asked is, well, you know, in the real world, you kind of juggle projects, right? 
you might be working on a quilt project and then you um, have to switch to a cuddle project or a minky project. So you're using different needle types. So when your slightly used needles are still sewing worthy, how do you keep them organized? There's a really super easy way to do that. And that's with the Grab It My Pad. The Grab It My Pad. This is what the hang card looks like. So you'll find this on the website, on Heidi's website, or in her store. Well, let me show you how this works. It's really simple. So this is um, a super thick piece of felt. And then we imprint all the different needle types that are available in Smets. And we use the Smets color chart to identify the different needle types. So blue for jeans, red for embroidery, orange for jersey, etc. White for universal because, well, it doesn't have a top color band. So within each um, needle type, then, we have a cell of the different needle sizes that are available. So universal from the smallest needle size 60 slash 8, all the way up, we go to size 120 slash 19, plus we've got some universal twin needles, so we've got space for that. So you can organize your slightly used needles um, in, in these cells. And oh, I guess I must misplace my my ver my the one that I personally use because I've got a lot of um, <laughs> jersey needles in in my um, my my pad. So the other thing you might be wondering, well, what's that flower head pin doing there? Well, if you have some of the older Smiths needles that are not color coded, so those would be older than 2014, um, but the needles are still good and sewing worthy. Once you take that needle out of the package and put it in your sewing machine, you want to remember what needle type and size it is, right? So you can just slide this um, flower head pin into the appropriate um, cell, needle type and size cell. So now you don't have to remember. You've taken it out of the pack, it's in your machine, and now your MyPad will, will remember. So you can organize lots of needles on your Grab It um, MyPad, and I know that um, Heidi has this updated version. What happened to my other one? Well, I'm, I don't think I'm sitting on it. Anyway, um, the MyPad, so you'll wanna get your hands on that, and I know Heidi has that um, also on her website. Um, the other Grab It products that I just want to mention is um, many of you use the Grab It bobbin savers. These little round donuts where you can um, organize your metal or plastic bobbins, whether they're full or not. So these are always handy. But from my travels, people were saying, well, yeah, Rhonda, you know, I've got six of these bobbin savers. I wish you had something that was more efficient with size. Um, so I came up with the bobbin saver square. And this is that same huggable plastic that will your bobbins will fit nice and snug in. You can put your full or empty bobbins here, plastic or metal. So put your bobbins in here. And um, if you have a cat or a dog and it comes along and swats this on the floor, or maybe it's um, a child, um, your bobbins aren't going to pop out. They'll, st they'll still stay right here in your bobbin saver square. So I know Heidi has this also up on her website. It comes in red, and this bobbin saver square holds over 60 bobbins. So that's quite a bit more than the original uh, round one. So you wanna get your hands on that. All right. So, let me see if there are any other questions. Well, let me just do my little wrap-up here. My name is Rhonda Pierce, and I represent Smets Needles in North America. And for those of you that see that magic unicorn behind me, yes, that was my first quilt project of, of this year. Um, I document my sewing. I'm not selling anything on my blog or on my personal uh, website. But if you're curious as to what kind of um, sewing I like to do, you can go to sewmorestitches.com, uh, check out the blog. You might specifically want to click 2020 sewing or 2021 sewing. I finished 
my first UFO that I finished during the uh, pandemic was um, a UFO that I'd had for 17 years. I had over 1,000 one inch half square triangles just sitting in a salad bowl <laughs> for 17 years. So you know what, I whipped out that project in March of last year and I finished it like in three days. So I finished quite a few other UFOs, um, a sashiko uh, quilt with hand stitched sashiko patterns, the traditional patterns, and I had 48 blocks. You know what, I probably finished that project in uh, three hours because I had all the blocks done. Um, I just needed to um, put them together. So I sewed them together and I finished all the edges with the serger and now it's hanging in my sewing room. So I love that project. I also like to make clothes. So I already mentioned I love uh, cuddle fabric. So you can see some of the ooh, luxurious coats that I've made, um, etc. But enough about me. So I want you to go to Hen and Chicks and buy your Smets needles, your grab it bobbin saver square. You know, you are so fortunate to have Hen and Chick Studio in your local community and also online. Heidi has a wonderful selection of fabrics. She has a wonderful selection of classes to take. Plus, they're just, they're really nice people. So you wanna help them out, us, our, our local businesses. So, you know, I want to say thank you for being with me today. We've been together for 51 minutes. You've learned a lot about Smith's needles, I hope. I realize that needles aren't sexy, they're not glamorous, and they're certainly not romantic. But you can't use your sewing machine without a Smith's needle. So thanks for joining me here today. Click on those links that um, Heidi has in the chat and also visit her website, henandchicks.studio.com. And until next time, stay safe and healthy and keep on sewing. Sew smets, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>